Hello and welcome to this fifth video in our educational series from Go no Go Charts for all of you optimal users. Thanks so much for tuning in today. My name is Tyler Wood. I'm a CMT charter holder. And as always, I am joined by Alex Cole, the chief of charts over here at Go no Go. How are you doing, my friend? Fantastic. So we've talked a lot about concepts in trend following. Uh, we've built these tools to help reduce analysis paralysis. We're going to be talking about the last piece of the puzzle today, which is volatility compression and the powerful way in which uh, traders and money managers can use this to their advantage. So let's, uh, let's dive into how we can embrace volatility and our optimal trend entries in both trend continuation as well as trend reversal. Just as a quick review, for those of you who've been tuning in, uh, the first three videos in this series, we talk a lot about the difficulty with technical analysis. We know that additional indicators provide additional insight. We think these tools are extremely powerful, but when we combine a robust checklist and we add lots of additional panels, and many indicators on our price uh, action, we can introduce analysis paralysis or indicator overload. Perhaps you've struggled with this yourself. So Alex, just as a quick refresher, let's talk a little bit about the complete solution from Go, no Go Charts. Yeah, you've heard it before, but we really believe in taking all the information that we can from uh, the pioneers in our industry to get the best discipline process that we can. And that started with Go, no Go Trend. Let's blend foundational concepts of trend following into an indicator that color codes price action according to the strength of its trend. And that allows us to keep price uh, first and foremost as our focus. Um, but then we also talked about momentum ideas and how we can take some uh, of the foundational concepts in that space to give us a sense of overbought and oversold levels, to give us a sense of divergence. Uh, we also talked about how the momentum indicator interacts with the zero line to give us a sense of continuation when in trend. And we talked about the visualization that we like to employ with the use of go no go icons. Well, today we're going to talk about the last piece of the puzzle, which is the go no go squeeze. So when I was uh, trying to put together a complete picture, a complete understanding of the technical analysis on any security over any time frame, I needed a sense of volatility. And that's really what the squeeze gives you. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about volatility. This should not be a four letter word. We can embrace volatility. We can use it to our advantage. And the basic concept that we're talking about is trying to visualize on our chart when we're in that environment, that, that tug of war that happens between buyers and sellers. Uh, for those of you that have watched uh, Squid Game, you know that a game of tug of war, once won by, uh, by one side or the other, can end quickly and dramatically for the other side. Uh, so we want to look for these periods of low volatility. That doesn't mean low volume or low trading activity, but when price gets into a narrow range of price action, when we have uh, a, that tug of war, as I said, between buyers and sellers, we can look for those periods and then look for the end of low volatility. From low volatility, we can see periods of higher volatility. And it's just, you know, to think about investor behavior, once everyone is clear that buyers are in control or sellers are in control, we tend to see positions move to that same side of the trade. And from that volatility compression, we can see high velocity moves in price. So the difficulty here is how do we do this without the subjectivity? How do we know when we have volatility compression and how do we know when that is broken? So Alex, talk to us a little bit about some of these concepts uh, that, that have been developed over the pioneers in technical analysis over many years. Yeah, brilliant work uh, that really allows us to capture that idea. You've got things like Bollinger Bands, Keltner Bands. If you've ever researched or studied or learned about volatility squeezes, you'll know what we're talking about here. Bollinger Bands and Keltner Bands being some of the most used of this kind of indicator. And generally what you're looking for, uh, for following a period of low volatility, is a breakout, and then you would uh, be most likely to then trade in the direction of the break because you have a period of low volatility that's going to be represented by narrowing bands and then when the price breaks out of the band in either direction you would trade in that direction assuming that that's the market giving you a clear signal now that that period of low volatility is over and the new move is going to happen so if you take a look at a, a security like this, this is an example from a few months ago. This is INSW. And if you look towards uh, the middle of this chart, that upper panel has Bollinger Bands on it. And you can see there 
that those bands are quite narrow. Now, how do you know if the bands are narrow enough? That's really the question you're trying to answer when you're looking at Bollinger bands. If you read some of John Bollinger's work, he talks about multiple ways to read the bands, when the bands are wide versus when the bands are narrow. In our situation, we're looking for those breakouts, those higher volatility moves. We're looking for narrowing bands. The second indicator on this chart is often a sister indicator that comes with Bollinger Bands, and that's Bollinger Band Width. And you can see then where these lows are on that lower panel. That'll tell us that the bands are relatively narrow, but you still need to use your eyes. You need to look at those lows and say, okay, are these lows as low as they've been in the past? Would I consider this to be narrow bands? In this chart, I would say yes, in the middle there, that's a low volatility moment. That's a, a narrow band. And so when we see that, we're then going to look at the next break and trade in the direction of the break. And the, the basic concept for, for this comes from uh, our mathematical understanding. Bollinger Bands use two yeah. standard deviations from the average price, which should encompass about 95% of the data. We know markets aren't a perfectly distributed uh, set of data, um, and, but what we can tell is that when price is moving, to the edge of these bands and pushing them uh, to wider directions, we know that's significant price action. So let's just take a look at another example. This is a, a dollar index fund, an ETF, UUP, and we can see multiple areas where bands have narrowed and then have broken. Now, as Alex was saying, this introduces some subjectivity. Right up here, we're seeing a bit of a topping process where price uh, the range of price action in this dollar index fund is narrowing, right? We're seeing tighter trading activity. We're seeing Bollinger Bands steadily in this narrow range. But we've had multiple areas of narrow range. And what we, what we know from our work in blending technical indicators is that uh, this is really powerful information. But when we add it to our robust checklist, Alex, we end up with an even more problematic chart. Absolutely. Just a bigger mess, a bigger, uh, bigger number of things to sift through and try to make sense of. And it becomes now almost impossible to look at the top right of that chart and know what's happening. Absolutely. So what we have done with the go, no, go squeeze indicator is look for that area of, uh, of compression, a coiled spring, if you will, the tug of war between buyers and sellers. And what you can see in the go, no, go oscillator panel is this amber grid. This is our go, no, go, squeeze indicator. And all that's happening is that as we sustain a zero line in our momentum oscillator, we are adding a, uh, a frame to the go, no, go, squeeze. For every period that it stays at zero, the grid of the squeeze climbs. And what we're looking for is then the break of the squeeze. In this case, the directional break was to the upside. So just follow through from the left side to the right side of this chart. We're trading in a no-go trend. We've had negative momentum, repeatedly retesting the zero line and being rejected lower. In this moment, we come up to the zero line and we get stuck there. Price is beginning to narrow in its range of activity and we sustain the gonna go squeeze building a max grid. When we see the grid finally break, it is not a trend continuation. It doesn't break to the downside. Instead, we see a trend reversal and this break to the upside, which precedes the action in price. This is a leading indicator of what we might see in terms of price activity, as all of the uh, traders in the marketplace realize that the volatility squeeze has been broken. Uh, we all move to that side of the trade. So what we know and uh, the way Alex characterizes volatility squeezes is uh, if you put enough pressure on a tube of toothpaste, eventually that's going to bust open, the cap will pop off, and uh, all the toothpaste comes out. So we're anticipating a higher velocity move in the direction of the break. Alex, let's go through a couple more examples, coming back to uh, international seaways. Yeah. Um, and I think what's important here also, just to remind, as a reminder, is that we, if you followed our last video on the icon, we talked about the, really the importance of the zero line. So in this case with INSW, we are in a go trend. Now, what do we expect uh, if this go trend is going to remain strong? We expect the oscillator to stay in positive territory supported by the zero line because we wouldn't expect excessive selling if this go trend is healthy. So we watch this go trend. We expect the oscillator to find support at zero. If it doesn't, that's a threat to the go trend. 
So when you then combine that with a max go, no, go squeeze here in the middle of this go trend, what we're saying or what we're suggesting is we're seeing the oscillator ride the zero line. And we know that it should hold, right? There's maybe that price action is narrowing. Maybe there's a tug of war going on between buyers and sellers. But if the go trend is to continue, that zero line should hold as a level of objective support. So when it breaks the squeeze in positive territory, that is really in the direction of the trend. And in this case now, we've got a continuation breakout of a max go no go squeeze. And you can see then the price moves higher. And then we go back to watching the oscillator to see if it finds support, which, by the way, it doesn't at the end of the chart. So that's, a, that's an interesting moment as well, just to remember how important that is. So in this example, we're seeing volatility compression as a continuation pattern. Uh, forget if you even had any indicator on your chart. If you're thinking as a classical technical analyst, you might identify this as a flag or pennant, a trend continuation pattern in the price action, right? From swift gains, the market digests these new highs, and uh, then we're continuing on in that direction. What we're adding is additional weight of the evidence, additional tools without clouding our price action uh, so that we can see the volatility compression and the resurgence of momentum right here in a single glance. Alex, let's let's go back to looking at that with a Bollinger Band, very similar and uh, and pretty clear in this case. Yeah, I mean, Bollinger Bands are fantastic, right? That's why we're, we're looking for the same things. We're looking for what John Bollinger discovered was such a crucial part of looking at the markets was when you could see that compression and volatility, the narrowing of the bands, you want to be able to then trade in the direction of the break. And what a great tool this really is. The problem that I have and others might uh, relate to is that when you add this to your problem chart as well, uh, then it becomes very, very complicated. So now you're adding more to the chart. But we're going to have a look at more examples as we go here. So if we go back to that uh, chart of the US dollar index, right, we saw that uh, topping pattern on our earlier example. It was very difficult, very subjective to understand whether or not the volatility compression here was more significant than it was in earlier areas of the chart. And as we're looking at the go no go oscillator, we can see the squeeze building up. We saw a little uh, break to the upside. Trend remains in a go. It strengthens to a blue bar, strong go conditions. But we immediately get back into a squeeze and build to the max grid. This time, we break to the downside. That's a significant threat to this go trend in the US dollar. Now we have excessive selling, negative momentum. What does it do? Comes back up to retest and we see what was so important in video number four, the idea of trend continuation. So now we've got negative momentum, we've retested zero, and in fact, momentum is resurging in the direction of this new no-go trend. So Alex, let's take a look at that on a complete chart, right? If we were using our checklist approach with traditional technical indicators, this is that same chart of the US dollar where we're trying to identify this topping pattern. Yeah, and I mean, you know, my eyes are still okay. They're not as good as they were, but it's hard to, it's hard to find that, uh, that story that you just told. I mean, you walked us through what was happening there, the topping pattern, uh, the attempt to go higher as it briefly found support at zero, but then entered another max go no go squeeze and then of course that second time it breaks into negative territory retests rolls over that was all easy to see the story the, the market action playing out because there wasn't anything else clouding up the chart and i think what's important to note you said it uh, earlier tyler is that it's that combination of concepts mm -hmm. that are super important like it's great to look at a bollinger band squeeze and look at how the bands are narrowing and then expect to trade in the direction of the break but can, how do I also get a sense of increasing momentum as that break happens? Well, maybe then I throw a momentum indicator on the bottom and then I can say, okay, yes, I'm seeing that RSI is going oversold as Bollinger Bands are narrowing or breaking out to the bottom of the band. And so all of that information is very, very important, but we are adding indicator after indicator after indicator to do it. Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to do, and that was the goal of, of the Go No Go Charts, was to have all of the information that we thought was necessary, but keep it in a chart that was relatively easy to understand. And of course, this is just a follow-up chart to UUP. People were calling for the top of, U of the dollar for a long time as it continued to climb. And then finally, when we were able to see that momentum break down into negative territory, the new no-go happened. And of course, the dollar dropped quite significantly. 
And again, just to reiterate the point that you made a couple of slides ago, now we switch roles. We turn our attention now to using you know, video four ideas, which is now that the no-go is in place, we look to the zero line as that objective level of resistance in this case. So as the no-go is in place, we watch to see if the oscillator finds, gets rejected at the zero line, which it does there towards the middle of that no-go. We get a little bit of trend continuation. Um, and then over towards the right side of the chart, of course, the momentum picked up, threatening that no-go. Absolutely. So for all of you Optima users who've been watching this series, hopefully you're taking away the idea that uh, Alex and I are not trying to uh, deliver a new silver bullet in the field of technical analysis, but rather to reimagine data visualization using these robust ideas from some of the best innovators in our space over the last 50 years. If you have any questions for us, uh, please shoot us an email, info at gonogocharts.com. And hopefully this educational series has been helpful to you in understanding the broad realm of technical analysis and improving your investment decision making. Stay tuned for our next video, the final one in this series, where we're going to tie it all together and talk through some practical applications. Thanks so much. And until that next time, take care of each other and trade them well.